In this SOLIDWORKS demo, we'll be placing a platform under this tank uh, in an assembly situation. We'll be using SOLIDWORKS WELMET functionality in doing this and showing a little bit about the cut list as we go. The first thing we're going to do is, of course, we've got the tank already open, so we're just going to insert our new part. And we're going to call this part platform. <clears throat> and I'm going to go and tell it that I want that platform to be on the, uh, the top plane of my um, assembly. So I'm going to go in and do a normal two again, grab my rectangle, and I'm just going to draw the top plate of my platform. Now I'm going to put a couple of dimensions on here, basically from the ends here. I want that to be 12. I want from the edges to be 36. And again on the same side here. And then from the back, we want it to be 24. Just so we have walking room. Now, for purposes that I'll reveal later, I'm going to go ahead and place a dimension uh, in the overall, and I'm going to leave this dimension driven. And I'm also going to place a dimension here for my overall width and leave that dimension driven as well. I'm just going to go in there and quickly do an extruded boss base. We're going to say that this is going to be a quarter of an inch thick steel. Make sure that my base is going in the right direction, which is not. Now it is. I'm going to click OK to accept. Now we have our first plate. Now I'll go ahead and rebuild that plate. And you can see there on the platform we have one boss extrude. Now with Wilmots, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the Wilmot functionality in. Uh, and that just basically tells SOLIDWORKS that this is a Wilmot. It adds a cut list item to our feature manager tree. And uh, we're going to go in and do a... Uh, a sketch and this time we're going to do a 3D sketch and we're going to do it on the bottom of this uh, plate. Now I'm going to go in and grab my rectangle again and I'm just going to do a little bit of an overlap all the way around and we're going to zoom in and I'm going to put a couple of dimensions here and tell it that, tell it that I want that to be a half inch and I want this to be a half inch as well that takes care of one of my corners. And I'll zoom in here. I want to go from here to here. Make that also a half inch. And then from here to here. We're just having a half inch overlap all the way around. Grab just a line tool now. And I'm just going to grab. And I use my tab key to uh, rotate myself around between the planes. And the ZY is where I want to be. So I can go down here like that. And uh, that's the only two I'm going to place on this particular one. I'm going to grab these two and make them equal. And let's put a dimension on them real quickly. I want that dimension to be 96. Okay, so we've got our platform, we've got our plate. So we're going to click OK to accept. I'm going to go back to my weldments now and tell it that I want to insert a structural member. Now we have lots of structural members to pick from. Uh, ANSI inch, you can see here all the ones. We've got ISO and some other things there as well. We're just going to select sleep channel, and as far as the size is concerned, we're going to pick the uh, we're going to pick the uh, four by five point four, and I'm going to just uh, go ahead and place this first one on. I want to rotate it 180 degrees, and with it rotated 180 degrees, looks like that's pretty close to where I want it. I go in now and select the line again to put my second one. And as you can see, we have the option to go in and create corner treatments. Uh, we can do an overlap uh, in but one and in but two and also a miter. We also have the ability to go in and set corner specific well gaps. I'm just going to leave these at the miter section. Uh, and go ahead and select the other sides as well. So now we have our uh, top layer support for our platform. You can see there the mitered cuts. So. One more time, let's go to structural member. This time let's pick a different one. Let's go with the uh, 5 by 6.7. We'll select the leg this time. Let's take a look at what this one looks like, how it's positioned. Let's do 180 degree rotation. And let's locate that profile on this corner. Just like that, we located the profile. Now I'm going to add a second group here. Tell it that I want to add a second group. Use the same profile. But this time we're going to just place it on there. Looks like that one is already in position the way I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK to accept it. 
Now we need a couple of trims. With the trim extend tool, I can pick the bodies to be trimmed here and here. I can tell it that I want them to be trimmed by either a face or by bodies. In this case, we're just going to pick the faces to trim this by. And we'll select that face and that face. And then this other face here as well. And notice how SolidWorks tells us how we want to uh, keep the bodies and discard the bodies. That's correct. So we'll go ahead and click OK to accept. And then we can zoom in on one of them and we can see that that was trimmed up nicely to give me my legs that I was looking for. Now finally, we're going to do a features and a uh, mirror. I'm going to mirror this thing about the uh, top plane. And the bodies, of course, to mirror are going to be the two legs. I'm going to click OK to accept. And then finally, we'll put one more uh, three-dimensional sketch on here. I'm going to place it on the bottom of my platform. And I'm just going to draw a line across here for support. We're just going to draw a straight line across. I'll go back to Wilmots and get out of the 3D sketch and pick structural member. And we're going to use the same thing that we used all the way around at the 4.5.4. And I'm going to select it. <coughs> and see here that our uh, support is actually on the top. So we definitely need to uh, rotate this thing around. Well, actually, we just need to locate the profile. Let's just locate the profile at the bottom. Click OK to accept. And then one more trim. And this time we're going to use bodies to trim. And I'm going to select here and here to select two bodies and click OK to accept. And then you can see there that we actually have a mitered corner. That SolidWorks has actually mitered out all the curvature there um, for that particular part. Now at that, we have a finished platform. We can go ahead and get out of the edit component. And we can take a look now at the uh, tank itself. So let's just open up the platform. You notice that we have you notice that we have uh, ten members in our cut list. Uh, of course, none of those members have been joined together, so we right-click to update. And when we update, we actually get five cut list items. So as you hover over these, you see that we have the tabletop, the two end pieces, the two side pieces, and the four legs, and then of course our center uh, support. So those have been added in there separately because of the lengths that, and the uh, the shapes that they are. So we can go in now and take a look at our properties. So with uh, SOLIDWORKS 2010, we have the ability to go in and look at our properties. And the first thing we see is our material is not specified. So let's go in and do that. Right click and plain carbon steel is good. Right click properties. Plain carbon steel is now listed. If I go into my cut list, you see here that uh, I have uh, no description on the part one. That's where these dimensions came in that we did a minute ago. I can go back here to my cut list one, go in and tell it that I want to place a description, tell it that this is going to be a plate, and then I can double click on the plate itself, and I can pick the uh, actual dimensions there, tell it that I want this the width, X, and then finally the overall length of that plate. And I've listed that now in my cut list, so you can see that there as well. So I'll go ahead and click OK to accept it. And let's go ahead and put this into a drawing. And I'm just going to pick the C landscape, it'll be fine. And let's go ahead and bring in, let's just bring in the front and uh, the top and then the side here just that quick. And I want to uh, go to my annotations, to tables, and well, my cut list. Just select one of them. Uh, cut list standard is fine. That's what we'll use. And I'm just going to drag it in and place it. And as you can see, my cut list has been filled in with all the information, with the dimensions that are tied to the uh, dimensions of the table itself, and the shapes, the size of the shapes, and the overall lengths of the total pieces. And of course, this can be moved around if I want to move my quantities over beside my item numbers and then of course my item numbers can be made smaller and you can resize the whole thing and you can add any uh, information that you want with this uh, in SOLIDWORKS 2010. You can also go in into your annotation and do an auto balloon and tell it that you want to auto balloon your part and uh, click OK to accept that as well and then you move those balloons around any way that you'd like.